I manifested a man into my bathtub. Hi, I just realized that I may or may not be wearing the same exact outfit as I was in my previous vlog. Let me just double check really quickly. Yep, she's beauty and she's grace. She repeats outfits very frequently. But what can I say? I get stuck in outfit loops and I needed to wear my Property Brothers shirt today because we are gonna be doing some real estate stuff. I'm gonna be showing you and giving you a little bit of an empty house tour. I was gonna bring Dougie Beans along to let him run around in the backyard because like that is a big reason I bought that house is because the backyard is just chef's kiss. Dougie Beans loves it. But the wind happened and it blew down the fence in the backyard. Love that. The only reason I know that is because my grandma has been watching that property like a hawk. She told me that she lives exactly one minute away via vehicle. And she has been over there. She has been over there before I even owned the house. She has been letting herself into every place that she can. She's been trespassing. Everybody knows if you watch the Texas vlog that that woman has no problem trespassing and she could get away with it too because she's an 83 year old lady. That's just wild and crazy. I mean, who's gonna tell her no? She's just a little grandma popping around. Who's gonna arrest her? No one. And she uses it to her advantage too because she was over there getting quotes for like lawn service and landscaping before I even had the keys, before the property was my own. I was like, grandma, I don't own that yet. You can't just go on someone else's property like in their backyard and bring random strangers to the backyard. I don't think that's okay. Like it's an estate, it was empty, but like if someone saw her do that, but honestly, if she got caught, I think she could talk her way out of it because she's just a little, she's just a little thing that's going around and you can't, you know how like with some people you, you just gotta let them go? You just gotta let them do their thing? She's one of those people. <laughs> she's reliable. You know who else is reliable? Today's sponsor, which is Green Chef. Did you like that transition? Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic meal kit company that helps you cook clean no matter your lifestyle. They have options for keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten free. I've been using Green Chef for going on two years now and I feel like not only does it save me time, effort, and energy by taking the meal planning out of my work week, but I've noticed my cooking skills greatly improved too, not to mention my culinary horizons have been broadened thanks to their delicious chef curated recipes. Do you honestly think that I would have ever thought to roast chickpeas? No, but here I am doing it and it was delicious. So it's very simple, you just choose from the 24 weekly meal choices they offer and a meal kit is delivered to your doorstep. The ingredients are pre-measured with minimal prep and the instructions have pictures. So you know, very nice touch. And you always have the option to skip a week or change up your meal plan whenever you want. If you are curious about Green Chef and you wanna try them out for yourself, you can go to greenchef.com and use my code Beatrice130 to get $130 off plus free shipping on your first box. Again, that's $130 off plus free shipping on your first box. You go to greenchef.com, slap in code Beatrice130 and get your Green Chef delivered to your door. Again, a huge thank you to Green Chef for sponsoring this video. But I digress, we're gonna pop into Lowe's. We're going to get a ladder and then we're gonna go to the property. I'm gonna show you around and I'm gonna explore a little bit. I got a little lantern in the back. We're gonna be like Nancy Drewing it, Blue's Cluesing it, checking in some places that probably have hatched some spiders by now. Ladders are expensive, bestie. This guy's watching me vlog too. Who cares at this point? Here we are. No. What are you doing, I'm gonna explore the attic in the garage. Yeah, I bought a ladder. Who's with you? No one. Should I come over? If you want to. If you feel the well, urge. You, you shouldn't be sticking your head up in that attic. It's probably got asbestos and spiders. As long as I'm not rubbing around in there, I should be fine. I just need to, I want to look. I want to look what's up there. I bought a whole ladder for 200 doll hairs. I'm looking in the attic. Why are you by yourself doing that? Who am I going to go with? I don't know. You didn't tell me you were coming. Well, you don't need to know what I'm doing all the time. I'll watch minis. Okay, so this house is very 
late 60s, early 70s type vibe. And that's the last time it got, Jesus, Elmo's fast. I just got off the phone with it. And it's already here. Anyways, this house is very like late 60s, early 70s, and that's like the last time it got updated. Like you got this fireplace here. I'm not a fan of fireplaces, but I keep buying houses with them. We got this linoleum tile. I'm actually a pretty big fan of that. Like look at this. It's kind of green, kind of cool. I might keep that because it's kind of a vibe. <sighs> but the thing that I keep running into, can't get away from, is the popcorn ceiling with the glitter. You got the glitter. Pretty spacious. Hey, Wellmo. Hi. Okay, I guess we're going to explore the attic in the garage first before I give you the official tour. Okay, the cool thing about this garage is it's not only just a two car garage, but it has this extra bonus room in the back. Oh, and it has a winch. I don't know what it is, but it's on a pulley and it's cool. The realtor called it a winch. It technically has a, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Anyway, the cool thing about this garage, like I was saying, not only a two car garage, but it has this bonus room in the back that was a workshop at one time. And I could put my gym in here, have a space for my car and a space for my cardboard pile, which is what's happening now. And I just don't park in the garage. I just have my gym in there in a cardboard pile. But the thing I wanna explore is this hatch because I think that it'd be cool to make a room up there and put a window, one of those ones that are like a hatch and you can sit there and look at the stars. Look at the stars. No? Okay, bestie. There is a lot of dead millers. Okay, it's just like a million degrees and not really a place where you could stand up. Hmm, I thought it would be different. God, I can't believe how hot it is up there though. I understand heat rises, but where were we? Alma already came and went. Living room's pretty big. We got a dining room situation in here. I brought my chairs from the other house because Elmo was complaining it didn't have anywhere to sit. And we've got this kitchen. Which if you're thinking, this is a lot of cabinets. It is a lot of cabinets. I don't know, it kind of feels really claustrophobic in here with all this storage. I wanna knock down this wall, do like an open concept kitchen living room area with a huge island in between. But the only thing is, so this wall, it's gotta be load bearing. We'll need to get a structural engineer's eyes on this to see if we can knock down this wall up to like I don't know, like this point, you can't see like where I am. I don't know, because the way that I'm trying to vlog this, but still. Okay, I'll continue showing you before I tell you my plans. I'm excited. Here's a bathroom. As we can see, it does not have a tub, which is problematic for me. There's not a single tub in this entire house. Just a spoiler alert right now. That's obviously a problem that has got to change. Your girl lives in the bathtub, breathes in the bathtub, does work in the bathtub. I have a bath desk for a reason. This is a bedroom, pretty good size. Something a little bit unique in this house that I haven't seen a lot of other places. Not that I'm a messiah of houses, but I've toured a couple. A baseboard heat rather than central forced air, which I don't know if that's good or not. That means that there's like pipes that run through the walls that are filled with hot water and they push out heat. So it's like a little bit better for like the dryness of Colorado. So that'll be interesting. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of just do shit on a whim and I deal with it later. So that's what this house is. Another bedroom. Got this 70s carpet all bunching up. This light sounds like it's having a lot of trouble right now, but this is what they're calling the master bedroom.
This house has a lot of potential, but the thing is like from the master bedroom, you go to this bathroom, which is like a walkway through to the kitchen. Like see, like this bathroom is just like a hallway, like a weird hallway with a walk-in shower. And then there's a downstairs. You've seen one unfinished basement. You've seen them all. It's really echoey. 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 Ooh, I kind of scared myself. I'm like, what if something starts talking back? <laughs> mm, and I'm alone in here. We don't know if it's haunted yet. Too soon to tell. I don't have a bad vibe though, so I think it's fine. Okay, so my other half of my like big renovation, why I need a structural engineer, is I wanna knock down the wall between these two bedrooms, make a massive master bedroom. But the major problem with my plans is finding someone to do the work. Yeah, I wanna do a lot of things myself, right? I wanna do some like DIY, I wanna tile, I wanna lay flooring, I wanna get in there and paint and maybe throw up some drywall, I don't know. As far as like messing around with the structural integrity of my house, I'm not gonna sit here and knock down walls without knowing if the entire thing's gonna fall down. I need someone that's a professional to come in and uh, assess the situation, make sure everything's kosher, make sure it's safe to do so before knocking down <laughs> the load bearing wall. Not the entire thing, but a majority of it. This is where we are with this house. Kind of at a standstill because we can't get any kind of construction happening. I've called so many places and they just tell me that they're gonna call me back to set up an appointment date and then they don't. So I'm getting ghosted by Tinder dates and I'm getting ghosted by contractors. <laughs> there is a lot of ghosting going on. So this house better not be haunted. Okay, let's go back home and I will talk more about what I've been up to this week because I've been doing this thing recently where I basically do the exact opposite of what I would typically do. Just being like a little bit more bold, a little bit more courageous maybe. I don't know. I kind of like love and hate how something as small or seemingly insignificant as like a text message or an email can completely have the ability to change up your whole life. Like it's just a small little bit of communication but with an email I sat there and I told everyone that my last day at work was going to be the 20th. So I officially put in my notice. So that's a Thing that's happening that's making me shit my pants a little bit. I reached out to Anne, which was my best friend. I don't know if you remember, she's been in like one vlog a long, long time ago, but we kind of like drifted apart when COVID was happening because I'm absolutely terrible about reaching out to people, especially like when they live in a different town than me. Friendships and stuff are always a little bit more manageable for me when we're in the same town. Like when we're not, it's so hard. Like I lost a friend when she moved to Kansas because I wasn't able to keep up. Kind of the same thing with Anne happened during COVID. Like we used to hang out like every single weekend before, but like once COVID hit and I was not going around people, because when I was still living with my mom, we just kind of like drifted apart. Plus there were like other things, other reasons why I wasn't going around as much because she's um, my ex's cousin. <laughs> that was also another thing. And there was an incident where I showed up at her house and he and his new girlfriend showed up and it was like really traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> to be around um but yeah so I I was more hesitant to like go up there and hang out at that time and then we kind of drifted apart I thought that she didn't like me or want to be friends anymore but I said like fuck it and I reached out to her and she was receptive and we hung out the other night and I'm very excited that she's back in my life and that we I don't know I'm gonna just make more effort to like be a good friend <laughs> or like at least tell her like what's going on like why I do not reach out as much because like that's kind of my thing too it's like when I'm going through stuff I like retreat from people I don't like seek them out and that's problematic because like in the case of friendship like if that person's like going through something too then they feel like I'm just not there for them you know what I mean um which was kind of the case but yeah so it's like a little bit crazy that just two small little bits of communication kind of change stuff up but I've also been doing stuff like trying to be a little bit more social like trying to just recognize when I'm feeling anxious about something and do the opposite of what I think that I want to do like just going into Starbucks and ordering a drink rather than waiting in the drive through line like that kind of thing like just small things but you never know uh and there was an incident with a plumber that's a whole ass story time um, 
hold on let's drive home i will get out of this hot car because i'm already like sweating buckets i don't know if you can see all the sweat that's accumulating on my face hole but it's a lot I'll drive home and then I'll tell you the plumber story because like it's actually kind of crazy and I have never been hit on before like not in person but I was hit on aggressively and I was like I need to dial back the bad bitch. I don't know what was going on with that honestly. I think that was like a once in a lifetime type thing but I was <laughs> I was just like laughing to myself afterward like thinking like um maybe you uh girl bust a little bit too close to the sun you know as they say because I don't know if I was emitting a vibe or what but like he was picking up what I was putting down horde and it was scary. I digress. I'll tell you about that in a minute. I'm like burning up over here. We are back home in the office as you can tell by me being in the office. I will bequeath to you the story about the plumber. So I want to preface this with saying that I do not get hit on like in real life. All of the times that I've been hit on have been online interactions. Like this is not something that happens to me. My resting face is this one. Does that look approachable? No. What ha happened was I was in the bathtub as I am frequently because your girl loves a bath was in there for so long, in fact, that the water had gotten a little bit chilly. So I turned on the faucet to like, you know, warm it up, add some hot water in the mix, get it back up there because we were in it for the long haul apparently that night. Anyways, when I turned the faucet, it just kept like turning. The water was on full blast, not turning off. And like, there was no way that I could turn this faucet to make it not be on which was concerning and I did panic for a little bit before I realized that I could pull the plug in the bathtub and it would be fine. It wouldn't overflow. A little bit embarrassing on my part, but I do not do well under pressure. That is another point that you need to remember for later in the story. The faucet won't turn off. That makes sense. So now come along with me as we try to fix this bullshit. We gotta turn off the main water. Where that is, I know that someone has showed me at one point where it was, but did I remember in that moment? No. We eventually found it though, shut it off, the tub stopped, but consequently all the water in the house as well stopped. So, didn't have any water. We might need to go to Lowe's and buy a cartridge. I'm not panicking, you're panicking. Just going to pop this out, okay. Uh-huh. Ow, mother Well, that's gonna be a very intense blood blister. Oh. <laughs> Being a handyman is hard. We need actual tools here. We need Jesus. This is like immediately discouraging because literally just today I was like, I'm gonna do all these projects on the new house. Immediately gets injured. But now we're going to Lowe's to try to find this part that we don't really know what it's called and get an actual vice grip so we can replace the part and put it all together and hope that it works. If I'm able to fix this, I'm going to be talking about it for the rest of my life, so just know that. If not, is it a sign? I don't know. Is this whole thing a sign? Let's go to Lowe's. I think that this is my golden opportunity, right? Like this is the moment, like my moment to shine. I'm gonna prove myself as this person that's capable of taking care of their own business. Did you know that there are cartridges in faucets? Did you know that? Anyways, so you have to like pull out the old cartridge and put the new one in, which sounds easy enough, but I was like yanking on this old cartridge and it was not coming off because over time it just got like a little bit grody and it got gunked up and it just, fused into the faucet. I eventually just gave up on the project that night and just went to bed. Woke up the next morning without water. Elmo popped over, as it does. You've seen how it pops over. No one can control it, which is cool. She's always there for me. She always has my back, but honestly, like sometimes in some situations, her anxiety is just too much. And this was one of those situations because she was very concerned, even though I had looked up a YouTube video with the exact situation and watched this guy do it. She was concerned that I was going to like ruin the pipe behind the wall, water just spray everywhere. And so I'm like still yanking on this thing because I'm like being gentle, right? Gentle little baby. And just like yanking it straight out or trying to. And she's like on the phone trying to get like any plumber that will come to come 
so that I'm not going to ruin the plumbing. Because if it was up to me, I would not have called the plumber for this situation. Anyways, so on with the story. The part where the plumber actually comes in. He like comes in 15 minutes, which is very quickly, very impressive. And he works for like a company, like an actual company, so he wasn't just some random. And mind you, this is the next morning with me without water. So I'm looking busted and crusted. I'm just wearing some workout clothes. My hair's up in a bun. We got some cheese spits going wild and crazy all around. I'm still wearing yesterday's makeup. Like I'm not cute. The guy is relatively relatively attractive, what people would call conventionally attractive. He seems about my age. My mom's like really anxious and she like, she has no chill. So as soon as he pulls up, she like goes and runs to the door and like waits for him. You can pretend like you didn't see him pull up and you can just like wait until he comes to the door and knocks before you go to the door. You don't have to sit there looking at him when he's in the van, mom. Again, no chill. That's just the way that that woman is. Elmo is an enigma. Eventually after some time, I pop my head in there just to see like what's going on and we lock eyes. This man like looks into my soul. I've never had someone look at me like that, but like it was just like very connected and like looking into my soul. I can't explain it, but if you know, you know. Intensely to the point where I had to like kind of like look away. I was like, this is weird. But I didn't think anything of it because sometimes like eye contact makes me feel uncomfortable. You know, like staring into someone's eyes. It's like not always, but sometimes like when they stare like really intensely. Anyways. So that's like the first interaction. And then my mom's like, he was cute. You should flirt. And I was like, I don't know how to flirt. And plus I look busted. So he proceeds to fix the faucet, which just consists of him pulling out the remaining part of the cartridge and sticking the new cartridge back in. So like, I'm a little annoyed at this point, like not with him obviously, but kind of like with my mom because I could have done that. And then my mom proceeds to tell him that I'm like trying to like learn some stuff or whatever. And then he offers, he's like, I could teach you how to put like all this stuff back together, like the actual faucet part. And I'm just like, no, nah, that's okay. Because I'm paying him $187. I'm not gonna sit there and do it myself. And I know how to put it back together because I'm the one who took it apart. So I'm like not picking up on anything at all. And my mom was like, he was flirting with you. They typically don't offer to teach you how to do things that they're doing. He wanted to spend time with you. But I do not pick up on that kind of stuff. Like it has to be like very blunt, very in my face. He gets done, I go to pay him. And then I don't remember how we got on the topic of like my other house. I think my mom brought it up because we're talking about contractors. Again, trying to call all of the contractors just to try to get estimates for like the work I want to get done. He brings up like that he does side jobs and all of this stuff and that like he can help out. And for some reason, I thought that he said that he had just moved here. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Like if you're starting your own business here, you don't have clients or whatever, you would probably work for some other company. I don't know. So he seemed really nice and stuff. And so we exchanged like personal numbers. We could set up an appointment for him to come and see the house and like give me estimates on stuff. So he leaves my house and then he ends up calling me a little bit later. And I was in the bathtub. I'm not gonna miss this call. It's from a number I didn't recognize. So I thought it was another contractor. I am answer while I'm in the bath. So he calls on this number that it wasn't the one that he gave me. And he's telling me that he wants to like talk to me on this number because his other phone's having issues, something about AT&T. It was just like a five second conversation and then he hangs up. And then I get this text message, sorry, I didn't mean to text you while you're in the bath. And then I text back, I was like, oh, that's embarrassing that you knew that I was in the bathtub. I'm obviously very professional. And then he was like, I was just calling to like ask you like a couple of questions about the house. I was like, okay, well I'll call you after I get out of the bathtub, yada, yada, yada. And he was like, oh, okay. And then he keeps like texting me though. Anyway, so he calls when I get out of the bathtub and we talk about the house and all the projects that I wanna do. And he seems like really excited about the project and stuff because he says that he likes renovation projects. So he says that he needs to like look at his schedule or whatever and see like a day that he could come up and he's like gonna text me. We settle on Saturday for him to come up to the house. I text him the address. And then he asked me if I wanna go to this taco restaurant with him. And then immediately, like before I could even respond, he rescinds that invitation and says, oh wait, never mind. I remembered I'm on call tonight. I can't. I don't respond yet. He follows that up with a third text that say, oh, by the way, like going to the taco restaurant would just be business related. I just like going out to restaurants and talking about business. And like, I'm thinking to myself, like what could I possibly talk about for that long about the house? Like we just went over everything on the phone. Like what do we, like what business do we have? Like you just need to see the house at this point. You know what I mean? And give me estimates. So I'm kind of like clued in at this point. I'm like, do you like me perchance? Perchance do you fancy me? But I'm just like, oh, okay, business tacos. 
And then he follows up, or, or we can go on a hike on Friday, which it was Friday the 13th when we would have gone on the hike. Stranger danger. And I was like, a business hike, question mark? No one goes on a business hike unless you're like a trail guide. You know what I mean? No one's out there with their briefcase hiking it up around Colorado. And I also tell him my aversion to nature. I was like, I don't want to get mauled by a mountain lion. I'm not really into nature. And he was like, if a mountain lion came, I'd get in between you. Okay. You are flirting. So I just like straight up ask him, I'm like, are you hitting on me? And he's like, yeah, but also like, I wanna be involved in like the renovation project. So I didn't wanna come on too strong and all this stuff. It's like, if my ass is picking up on it, you are coming on strong, sir. So I, in my head, in my stupid head, in like this rom-com fantasy, was thinking that like, oh, this was like a meat cute. You know what I mean? I was trying to fix this part myself. I couldn't do it. We called someone in here. I manifested a man into my bathtub was my whole thought process. And so I was like entertaining it. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, well we could go to dinner or something. Why not? Because I'm also thinking he's already seen me at my worst. He hasn't even seen me when I try. <laughs> so, so it kind of like gassed me up. I was like, maybe we are emitting a vibe. Maybe I have jumped timelines or something with all of the random shit I've been doing this past week. Maybe we are in another dimension. No, cause things went bad fast. Some foreshadowing for you. Like he's texting me until he goes to sleep. He wakes up and he's texting me and like I have to go into work so I can't entertain his ass when I'm in work because I can't take my phone in there. Anyways, he texts me like the next day too in the evening and the evening time is when the shit hit the fan. And he texts me and he's like, I just really wanna see you. You wanna go out to dinner or whatever today? And I make something up because like I just got out of work and I don't feel like peopling when I get out of there. So I was just like, oh no, I'm I'm doing something, I'm busy. Um, I have plans with someone else. I did not. He said like he was going to LA for some training the next week and so he was just like wanting to see me as much as possible and I was like, you were gonna get sick of me. He's just coming out like really strong and at this point it's like too much too soon. As it gets later and later, it gets weirder and weirder. He's telling me about like all this stuff, like how he thinks that I'm his soulmate and like all of this like connection stuff. And he's like, you're a really smart woman. and I'm a really smart man and like all of this stuff. And I was just like, okay. I was like, what did I tell him that would make him think that I was really smart? I can't think of anything. <laughs> Cause I, it was just been like very general conversation. Like I haven't told him anything philosophical or groundbreaking or anything like that. It's just been very surface level conversations. And so I'm thinking like, this is a little weird. And he starts to tell me like that I'm special and I'm unique and all that stuff. And like, it's a huge red flag for me when people go into that, like first thing when they meet you because they don't know. I'm not saying you're not special, but I'm just saying they don't know you and I'm pretty basic, let's be honest. So immediately my guard's a little bit up and I'm like, oh, okay, this is not gonna work out. You're crazy. So I start pulling back. He calls me at 8.30, 9 o'clock at night and I answer because it's a number again that I did not realize. And like I said, trying to get any of these contractors to call me back so I don't wanna miss no calls. I don't care when they call, if they call, just as long as they're legit. I answer the phone and this sounded like another person. So much so that I wasn't sure who it was. Also, he was calling from a third number at this point. What is going on? So it takes me a while to figure out who it is. And then, so he just starts talking about like the house stuff again, like trying to get more information on the house, like when it was built, potential problems that could arise. So I was like, okay, like this is a little weird, but we're just talking about the house. It's not really creepy. I tell him that at one point the house flooded and he just goes off about this. And he's calling me love, by the way, which disgusting. He was like, love, why didn't you consult me before you bought this house, blah, blah, blah. Like flooding is such an issue. And I was like, it was in 1999 and I didn't know you before I bought this house and I would not have consulted you anyway. He just goes on and on and on about landscaping too. And he was like, if my mother wasn't poor, I would have been an engineer and I wanna be a pilot and all of this stuff. And I'm starting to realize like, okay, he's drunk. That's what's going on. That's why he sounds different because he's slurring his words. He's not really enunciating things as well. This motherfucker is drunk. He called me drunk. So I'm just trying to like get him off the phone. So I'm just like, oh, okay, well, we'll discuss like the house stuff later, completely planning on like just blowing him off and canceling the Saturday appointment. Cause at this point, like this is too much, obviously. But then he takes that as a transition to talk about our first date, which is not gonna happen. Like you've already like lost that opportunity, sir, by being scary and making me uncomfortable. 
I've known you for less than 48 hours at this point. He asked me what my ideal first date would look like and I was like, I don't know. Cause again, I'm not interested in this guy. I'm not gonna go out with him. You scared me at this point and make me uncomfortable. I just like wanna get off the phone. But he's very like rambly. And I'm also being cautious because mind you, this guy knows where I live. So I'm just like trying to like keep the peace, not make him angry. And he's also drunk. And the fact that he went off on me when I told him that a house that I bought flooded in 1999 was just, you know, I'm, I was treading lightly. He was like, okay, well, I know what you would like, okay? And he was like, what if we go to the sand dunes at night and we just look up at the stars and we have like just this deep conversation about the universe and ponder it and all this stuff. And I'm just like, what the fuck? I was like, no, that would actually make me really uncomfortable. Like I don't even want to go out in a secluded area in the day with someone I've just met, let alone in the middle of the night. And the sand dunes is like two hours away. This is very rural. It Sand dune is just that, it's just, a hill that's made of sand. I'm not going there with you alone, let alone at night, no. And then he was like, oh, okay, okay, I understand that, I understand that. What about the top of Pike's Peak? Fucking mountain. No, no, that's the same as the sand dunes. That's not any better. And then he suggests this like local like trail area, but at night. And I'm like, no, why do you want me to go with you alone at night? That's scary. I don't need to look at no stars. Like, yeah, stars are cool, but they're not gonna be cool if I'm gonna be murdered by someone, which is the vibes that I'm getting at this point, cause this is crazy. So I tell him no a third time and I reiterate, I'm like, I'm just really uncomfortable right now. I'm just gonna go to bed. Like I'm starting to like lose my cool because he's not picking up that I'm just like not into it. I'm like, I'm just really uncomfortable right now, honestly. Like I don't wanna go anywhere with anybody, not in public, on a first date. I definitely don't wanna go in the middle of the rural wilderness. I, you already know that I don't fucking like nature. But then this man, has the audacity to flip it back on me. He was like, oh, okay. Um, actually, the way that you're talking and telling me that you're uncomfortable with all this is actually a really big turnoff for me. So he says he's gonna step back. And I'm just like, okay, good night. <laughs> the fuck? Thank you. So it's nighttime and I'm a little bit scared. So I just like make sure like all of my house is locked up. Every time my security camera goes off because like there's a motion sensor on it. Every time my security camera goes off, I'm shitted a little bit. I'm like, oh my God, he's here. It's happening. I don't know what to do in this situation, but it's just like a bunny going across or whatever. Cause we have a little gang of bunnies that live in my front yard now. Love that for us. Anyways, not the point. Except for the fact that the bunny scared me all night. So he texts me the next morning and he's like, I cannot stop thinking about how our conversation ended last night. I'm literally losing sleep over it. I want you to know that I had a few drinks. I'm sure you could tell. I plan on not having any drinks when we're hanging out. It makes me sloppy and dumb. My apologies. And before I can like tell him like, I don't wanna go out with him or whatever, he's like, that won't happen again. I promise you, I'm truly embarrassed. I lost sleep over it. I want you to experience my best. I want to show you my best. I don't know why I had a few beers last night, but I immediately emptied out the rest of the six pack I bought two days ago in the drain. I forget IPAs hit harder. And then I'm able to like finish my thought and I'm just like, um, I've been with people who had problems with alcohol in the past and immediately took me back to that. I'm sorry, but I'm just not interested. He says, I'm not an alcoholic. A six pack would last me for days. Given the opportunity to hang out with you, you'll see I'm not your ex. Then I text back, I was like, that was a completely different person on the phone last night. I'm not speculating on anything or saying that you have a problem, but it just turned me off completely. He sends back another long paragraph. I respect your decision, but I am for a sober life. Sorry about that. Alcohol does change people. And now that you've brought that to my attention, thank you. I'm not touching it. I don't want to turn anyone else off. What about the projects? Do you still think I could be a part of all that? We can keep it strictly business. And then I text back, I'm sorry, but no. He says, really? Can I ask you how come? Sir, you can't figure it out? I say, because that freaked me out. It would have been one thing if we dated and decided there was nothing romantic there, but what happened last night made me really guarded. And he's like, oof, what happened? I thought we were just having a normal conversation. And I was like, you were just so pushy. And when I told you I was uncomfortable, you told me you were turned off by it. He said, what, really? And I was like, yeah, that's how it ended. If you just had a couple of beers, you're not like blackout drunk from it. You're not, you know what I mean? I don't know, anyways. So he goes on saying he's sorry, thanks for letting him know that, asking me if there's a chance to allow him to redeem himself. I say no. 
And that's the end of that experience. Until like a couple hours later when I got a call from like a random number that I didn't recognize, again, answering it thinking it's one of the other contractors that I desperately need to call me back. So I answer, the guy on the other side of the phone is like, hey, is this B? I was like, yeah, this is her, and immediately hangs up. And so I thought that that was the plumber guy again. Not 100% sure, but like it sounded like his voice, like his sober voice. It's just a little bit suspicious. But yeah, it's been a couple of days since then and he hasn't tried to reach out. I haven't heard from him. I haven't seen him on my security cameras. So I think we're all good. But it did like freak me out a little bit and I was kind of just like, yeah, maybe we should use some discernment in like being brave. But I don't know, that's just what ha happens. So I just decided that I probably need to dial it back a little bit because whatever energy I tapped into is attracting the crazy people. That was a long ass story. I'm sorry, but the details were important and it was a weird thing that happened to me and it probably will never happen again ever because i've lived 30 years without it happening i digress what else this video is going to be maybe really long so i wanted to like touch on a little bit like the whole not doing weight loss content anymore because i need to like clear that up like in my last video i said that this isn't a weight loss channel anymore it's going to be about self self growth i'm interested in a lot of different stuff i'm interested in how i can grow and become like the best person that I could possibly be. Be the best be. Anyways, <laughs> uh, not gonna be the best person you could be with those puns. Bad, bad. But I'm still obviously gonna be working on my binge eating disorder. I'm gonna try to be healthy and get stronger. Those are still really important things to me that I'm gonna be aiming for. So like that type of content's not gonna just go away, but I don't wanna be a weight loss channel. Because frankly, weight loss content is freaking boring. Like I just want to like get to a point where I'm healthy and maintain and not really have to talk about it anymore. It's not fun to talk about that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Hi, we're vlogging on my phone now because my camera battery died and I just laid down and got comfy. My ass is not gonna get up to get a camera battery right now. So coming at you at a little bit lower quality audio, but the same shitty visual quality that I provide in all my videos. Anyways, <laughs> but yeah, so I just wanted to kind of touch on that and let you guys know that I'm still gonna be focusing on those kinds of things and I'll be updating you, but I'm not gonna sit here and do like week weekly weigh-ins or whatever else and have the channel solely focused on my weight loss anymore. And let's be actually pretty honest, it hasn't been for like a very long time, but I digress. I just wanted to continue to word vomit a little bit more, even though this video is probably going to be very long. But as always, I thank you so much for watching and I hope that you're having a wonderful day. And if you want to subscribe and hit that notification bell, all that stuff really helps out this channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye!